During the 1960s, America saw the most tumultuous series of political assassinations in its history. Within five short years, the country witnessed the deaths of President John F. Kennedy, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, and the most influential civil rights and African-American leader of the century, Martin Luther King Jr. Each tragedy was etched into public consciousness through the immediacy of broadcast television. For a half century, another assassination from that era has been deceptively presented to the public as a freak accident. What really happened to one of the most popular and controversial mystics and ecclesiastical thinkers of the modern era? We examine the curious passing of Thomas Father Louis Merton on this edition of the Memory Hole Blog Report. For Memory Hole Blog Report, this is James Tracy. Thomas Merton came to my attention in the early 2010s by way of reading among the first historical philosophical examinations of John Kennedy's assassination, JFK and the Unspeakable, why he died and why it matters. In that work, Catholic author and former professor James Douglas uses Merton's anti-war perspectives as a prism through which the reader may reconsider Kennedy's short-lived attempt to forge another course for America's rapidly emerging corporatized military state. In his renowned autobiography, The Seven-Story Mountain, Thomas Merton describes his Christian spirituality and conversion to Catholicism while he was attending Columbia University in New York. In 1941, at the age of 26, Merton entered the Gethsemane Trappist Monastery in Kentucky. Merton would remain there for 27 years while authoring over 70 books on poetry, Christian mysticism, the contemplative life, social criticism, and the existential reality of nuclear war. Many of these works became bestsellers and inspired countless thousands to pursue their own spiritual paths. Through his writings, Merton exerted an enduring influence that extended far beyond the intellectual limits of his theological training. Like many of his secular contemporaries, as early as the 1950s, Merton became a critic of U.S. foreign policy, and given his prominence and outspokenness, there's a high probability that he soon became a surveillance target of what he termed the warfare state. In a series of correspondences with high-profile political leaders and celebrities during the early 1960s, Merton declared how America's national policy vis-a-vis -vis other nations is, quote, built on affluence, the obsessions of the military, and the phobias of political extremists, unquote. In a set of observations that are as apt today as they were at the height of the Cold War, he pointed to how the people of the country are by and large reduced to passivity, confusion, resentment, frustration, thoughtlessness, and ignorance, so that they blindly follow any line that is unraveled for them by the mass media. In his poem Invoking the Holocaust, chant to be used in processions around the site with furnaces, Merton wrote, do not think yourself better because you burn up friends and enemies with long-range missiles without ever seeing what you have done. Merton even directed two letters critical of the Vietnam War directly to President Lyndon Johnson. As author Philip F. Nelson observes, one of Father Merton's letters to Johnson was found in what the President termed his Mean Letters Files. In it, Merton cautioned Johnson for his use of sheer force to deter communism in Southeast Asia. Merton wrote, The use of such military force seems to me immoral and unjust when it is used without wisdom. As Nelson notes, In all likelihood, the remarks not only called into question Johnson's morality and wisdom, 
but likely his manhood as well. As the historical record attests, Johnson became infuriated when Martin Luther King Jr. took a public stance against Vietnam in his April 4, 1967 Riverside Church speech, exactly one year before King's assassination. Months after the deaths of King and Robert Kennedy, Thomas Merton was on a rare trip abroad, attending a monastic summit in Bangkok, Thailand. After giving an afternoon presentation on December 10th of 1968, he retired to one of the small cottages reserved for conference attendees. Later that afternoon, Merton was found lying dead in his quarters. Yet there are conflicting accounts as to the cause of death. The U.S. State Department maintained the death was the result of heart failure. In contrast, the Associated Press reported the day after Merton's passing that he was killed in a bizarre accident. Merton's own colleagues reported they found his body with several observable burn marks or cuts and a particularly large wound on the rear portion of his head. In their 2018 book, The Martyrdom of Thomas Merton, authors Hugh Turley and David Martin lay out compelling evidence that calls into question the conflicting official stories promoted by the State Department and the news media. Turley and Martin suggest the stories were likely fabricated to conceal the real causes of Merton's death and the likelihood of homicide. For example, within hours of Merton's death, the U.S. Army quickly moved to take possession of Merton's body. Moreover, no autopsy was ever conducted. Merton was flown back to the United States on military transport, alongside the corpses of U.S. soldiers who died in the war he so vehemently opposed. The Thai police report on Merton's death excluded photographs, lab reports, investigators' notes and memos, and eyewitness accounts. In addition, the names of key witnesses were misspelled in the report, suggesting a conscious effort to frustrate any subsequent investigation. One day after the event, the Associated Press referenced anonymous Catholic sources to assert the official story of Merton's death, which persists in popular memory to this day, that Merton lost his balance while exiting a bathtub, grabbed a standing electric fan, the faulty wiring of which short-circuited and electrocuted him. In their research, Turley and Martin discovered photographs of Merton's body at the crime scene. What was depicted in these photos differed glaringly from the accepted explanations of his death. Yet, the authors were forbidden from both reproducing the images or even providing second-hand renderings of them for inclusion in their book. Theologian and author Matthew Fox has carefully researched Merton's death and spoke to former CIA officers deployed to Thailand in the late 1960s. Upon being asked of agency involvement in Merton's unusual death, one said, I will neither affirm it nor deny it. Another CIA agent, however, was much more forthcoming. When Fox asked, did you guys kill Merton? He responded, yes. Adding, the last 40 years of my life I have been cleansing my soul from the actions I was involved in in the name of the CIA in Southeast Asia as a young man. To this day, there is no small degree of consternation among Catholic opinion leaders over the emerging controversy surrounding Merton's death. Upon the event's 50th anniversary, well-known writer Patricia Lefebvre submitted an article to the prominent National Catholic Reporter on Merton's death. The piece drew on Turley and Martin's volume and highlighted the evidence supporting the probability of Merton's assassination. The editors at National Catholic Reporter refused to carry the article. Perhaps Merton would not want for us to continue to dwell on his death 50 years on. Yet in 2021, the world remains a very long way from achieving the peace he had hoped for, and his consistent emphasis of truth 
as a bedrock principle for such a peaceful world. Peace demands the most heroic labor and the most difficult sacrifice, Merton wrote. It demands greater heroism than war. It demands greater fidelity to the truth and a much more perfect purity of conscience. Over the last 50 years, the bid for this very pursuit of truth has resulted in a wealth of accumulated research into the deaths of the Kennedys and Dr. King. That work weighs heavily against the state-endorsed storylines on each of those assassinations. Along these lines, the investigation of Thomas Merton's tragic and untimely demise has perhaps only just begun. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHB at patreon slash memoryhole. For memoryholeblog.org and MHB Report, this is James Tracy.